Hello, well hopefully by now you've got a really good understanding of what lenses are for and how they work to help you take the best pictures you possibly can. In this lecture I'm going to quickly go through the most popular types of photography and suggest some great lenses for each. Obviously this is just my choice and there are other excellent lenses available to you out there and there's more information in the resources on these lenses and some others too. Let's take a look at landscape photography first. Landscape photography is not just about getting a perfect image of a scene and making sure that it's sharp and well exposed. Successful landscape photography evokes a sense of time, place and includes an element of human interaction, even if that interaction is the effect it has on the viewer. In a way, it's a chance for the photographer to pay homage to the world around us either natural or man-made. Given so much width and depth available in the frame, the landscape photographer needs to understand how to take advantage of perspective. Composition. Relative distance. And the interaction between the manufactured and the natural world. Often a landscape photographer will have studied that scene for some time before taking the picture, noting angles, how the light falls at certain times of day, and how the scene is affected by different weather conditions. It could take many attempts to get that perfect shot. Landscape photography is about getting as wide an angle of view as possible, to get as much of the image into the frame as you can. You also want to have a wide depth of field to get most of the frame sharp. It doesn't matter if you want to shoot expansive scenery or cityscapes or architecture. You're going to be looking for high quality wide angle lenses. So if you're looking to photograph almost anything in the wide world of landscapes, I would suggest you take a look at one of the following. The Canon EFS 10 to 18 mm f4.5 5.6 IS STM lens. This EFS lens gives you a wide 16 mm effective focal length, allowing you to shoot imposing architecture and expansive landscapes. It's a high quality, lightweight, and cheap lens, a great starter for a landscape photographer. The second suggestion would be a Canon EFS STM 24mm f2.8. This is a fixed lens for crop cameras, offering an effective 36mm focal length. It's very sharp and a great lens to have in your bag. It does produce some barrel distortion, but that can be corrected in editing software. Again, small, light and cheap. The next one would be the Canon EF 16 to 35 mm f4L IS USM lens. As you would expect, this L lens is for full frame cameras. It's bigger, heavier, more robust, and more expensive. But it is an excellent investment for a landscape photographer. Images are extremely sharp across the frame, even wide open at f4, and improving further as you stop down the lens. For a more general lens, that would also take great landscapes, I would look at the Canon EF 24-70mm f4L ISUSM lens. Again, well built and high quality. It's a good walk around lens that will also shoot travel and macro photography. Of course, there are some good third party lenses too. The Sigma 14-24mm f2.8 art lens has got some great reviews. It's quite heavy, but has good sharpness throughout the focal range and is really very good in low light. Or for something cheaper, take a look at the Rokinon FE14 MC 14mm f2.8 lens. This is a manual focus lens, so you would have to be comfortable with that, but it has great sharpness at f8 and very little chromatic aberration.
Now let's take a look at some lenses for sport or action photography. Sport and action photography is all about speed and accuracy. Every split second counts and you only ever get one chance to capture that shot. I would say that action photography is one area of picture taking where practice is key. Like preparing for the sport itself, this could involve practicing single elements, zooming or panning, and using your autofocus so that it comes naturally to you when you're in the field. For the very best results, it's important to have the right combination of camera and zoom lens. So let's start with probably the first choice single lens for nearly every sports photographer. The Canon EF 70 to 200 mm f 2.8 L IS2 USM lens. Whilst every lens is a compromise, this lens excels in all the areas that are important for a sports photographer. The images are tack sharp, the autofocus is extremely quick, and it's great in low light. The downsides are that it's very heavy and you would probably need to use a monopod with it. This is an EF lens for full frame cameras and it will work very well with crop frame cameras too, but the autofocus will be a little slower. For a longer focal length, try the Canon EF 100 to 400 mm f 4.5 5.6 L IS2 USM lens. This is an excellent lens for daytime action, though not really good for low light. The image quality of this lens is considered to be outstanding and the build quality is superb. The focal range of 100 to 400 millimeters or 160 to 604 millimeters on an APS-C camera gives you more options than say the 70 to 200 millimeter, especially for wildlife and sporting events. And for a great lens with extra bragging rights, take a look at the Sigma 150 to 600 mm f5 to 6.3 DG OS HSM sports lens. This is a beast weighing three kilos and is 10 inches long, but it has very fast autofocus, superb optical stabilization, and produces very sharp images. Of course, some of the sports lenses would also be good for wildlife photography. But wildlife photography is all about getting your subject up close while keeping your distance. Usually you're shooting in reasonable light and so can exchange a little speed for that extra reach. Again, the Canon EF 100 to 400 mm f 4.5 5.6 L IS USM lens is a great choice for wildlife photography as it's ideal for photographers who are traveling light and can only take one telephoto lens with them. If you want something with the same reach, but less expensive, take a look at the Sigma 100 to 400 mm f5 to 6.3 DG OS HSM contemporary lens. It has very sharp, accurate focus, which is very fast at 100 mm, but slows a little at 400 mm, and is pretty small and light compared to similar lenses. Finally, if you really want that extra reach, check out the Sigma 300 to 800 mm f5.6 EX DGUF APO HSM autofocus lens. This specialist lens really comes into its own when shooting wildlife photography. It is a huge and very solidly built lens, but the picture quality is excellent. The autofocus is good and the focal range beats pretty much anything else available. Now let's take a look at some good lenses for travel photography. Picking a lens to travel with is a bit different to picking a lens for other situations. Not only will you be concerned with image quality, but also size, weight and versatility. After all, you're going to be carrying it around with you when you're traveling. And ideally, you want to keep the number of lenses in your bag down to a minimum. So for travel photography, it's better to try and focus on getting a smaller number of lenses that work well in a wide variety of situations. I would suggest that you choose two lenses, a walk around lens and a fast prime. If you've decided that you only want to take one lens, then you'll want to take a good walk around lens, one that will satisfy your travel photography needs. 
The usual walk around focal lengths are considered to be between 28 and 50 millimeters. So these lengths should be good for street scenes, travel portraits, architecture, and landscape shots. The first one to look at, I think, is the Canon EF 24 to 70 millimeter F 2.8 L lens again. This lens will allow you to shoot panoramic landscapes, more intimate city images, contextual portraits, low light images, and details. In fact, most of the things you might want to shoot when you're traveling. It's a superb fast lens and it's weather sealed, which is something you might want to consider if you're going off the beaten track. If you're going to be traveling in and around cities, you might want to think about a wide angled lens, perhaps the Tamron AF28 to 75 mm F2.8 SPXR DI LD lens. It's not too heavy and offers clean, sharp images, being perfect for architectural and landscape pictures. It's also very good in low light. If you want to have a little more reach, take a look at the Canon EF 24 to 105 mm F4L USM lens. It's a favorite with photographers who want to travel light. It offers really good image quality with advanced image stabilization, which is something you may want to have if you're shooting mostly handheld. It's a superb portrait lens and very good for landscapes. And the near silent focusing is useful if you're going to be shooting in enclosed spaces. When it comes to that prime, I don't think you can go wrong with a Canon EF50 F1.8 STM or a Canon EF35 F2. Both are excellent lenses and give a good prime focal length for travel photography. And both are also a perfect size to fit into your pocket. And finally, let's take a look at the kind of lenses you'll need for portrait photography. As a portrait photographer, you may have to shoot various kinds of pictures, from group shots of families to professional style headshots. The challenge for a portrait photographer is to tease out the inner essence of the subject. Now this might sound grandiose and pretentious, but a picture of someone that doesn't reflect their character or personality is really just a two-dimensional representation, a passport photo. For a good portrait, the subject needs to trust the photographer and feel comfortable. And it helps if the photographer is also relaxed with the subject and also comfortable with their equipment. Usually you're looking for a lens that provides a reasonable working distance from the individual subject with a narrower field of view than a 50 mm lens. And so the 85 mm is the most popular focal length for portraiture. And I think the Canon EF 85mm f1.8 USM is a really good place to start. It's an excellent portrait lens and the f1.8 is ideal for shallow depth of field that lets the portrait really pack a punch. It's a very sharp lens with fast autofocus. Now, both Sigma and Tamron both produce very good 85mm lenses, but to be honest, nothing can compete with this Canon for quality and price. Even the Canon L lens, the 1.4L 85mm, is not regarded as highly by photographers as this f1.8. Crop frame camera owners have a real advantage here because the Canon EF 50mm 1.4 USM is a good portrait lens when you account for the crop factor. Ideally, having a longer lens gives you a slight advantage when shooting portraits because the subject looks more natural. 
While wider lenses make the face appear narrower, it also gives you an unflattering enlargement at the foremost feature, often the nose. By contrast, telephotos make the face look very slightly wider, which is a little more pleasing to look at. So that was a quick overview of the best lenses for particular kinds of photography. As I mentioned, there are other great lenses available too. And if you want to get a good lens to start with, none of these lenses are going to let you down. Ah. Ah.